This is Houston Newsmakers with Cambrell Marshall. You know, it can't be ignored anymore. Our climate is changing. What we're seeing and feeling can't be denied. Year after year, we've seen one record fire season after another, and this year's latest is no different. Biggest, largest, fastest growing. Those are the words that have become a part of our vocabulary in recent years. The question is, how much is climate change responsible for it? Uh, Chris Funk has stepped up to try to make it easier to understand with his book, Drought, Flood, Fire, How Climate Change Contributes to Catastrophes. Dr. Funk was a founding member and is director of the Climate Hazard Center at the University of California, Santa Barbara. Good morning, Dr. Funk. Good to have you on with me this morning. Um, let's talk about the fires underway right now. Um, this is like a broken record. Fires uh, one after the other. Is there one main climatological phenomena for it, or could it all be summed up into, well, the Earth is warmer? Yeah, there is a very, you know, straightforward uh, meteorological explanation for it, and it's also related to uh, the way that climate change probably made the Hurricane Harvey substantially bigger, and it's something that just we really all need to understand. You know, we all know that the the atmosphere is made of nitrogen and oxygen. And as the atmosphere warms, those molecules move further apart. And so there's more space for water vapor in the air. And uh, here in the West, in California, we see that increase in kind of water holding capacity of the atmosphere, sucking moisture up out of vegetation and making it really bone dry. Wow. And so, yeah, and so that's not increasing the frequency of fires, but it's increasing the extent of fires because they can grow explosively. And they have been doing that quite a bit. I, for anyone who wants to get this book, I want to call your attention to chapter two, uh, entitled Welcome to an Awesome Planet. Uh, you write, we hang isolated in space with only an incredibly thin layer of atmosphere standing between us and oblivion. If we could drive our car straight up at highway speeds, we'd approach the edge of the atmosphere in a matter of minutes and into this thin membrane, we're dumping about 28 million gigatons of carbon dioxide every day. That puts things in perspective for sure with some hard facts about that. what's going on here. So in terms of what we have to convince people about what are the facts are, I'm assuming that's what your book is. And are you trying to do that? And can you do that without political spin? Or is that part of the thinking just not to do it with politics at all involved? It's, yeah, this, you know, this book grew out of conversations, you know, with a lot of our, our local volunteer firefighters, you know, just regular people of all political persuasions. And, you know, I, I feel really passionate about educating people and starting conversations and, you know, sharing with them the data so that they can draw their own conclusions and also explaining, you know, uh, in accessible ways, the, the basic physics of what's going on, because it's something that we all need to understand. Yeah, a lot of people can't really put their mind around physics, but they can put their mind around a book that's really well written with the scientific part in there as well. Let's talk about the tropics for a minute. We've been keeping an eye on some activity going on on several areas and several oceans this past week. Tropical systems threatening millions. So on one hand, we got what seems to be dry climate causing famine and forest fires. At the same time, we've got climate threatening to dump millions and billions of gallons of water on millions of people. Is this all related to climate gone amok? Well, again, it's the same simple idea that a warmer atmosphere can hold more water. You know, so you, you can think about, uh, you know, the Atlantic Basin warming up, and then that evaporates a lot of water. And that water, and, and when that happens, there's a tremendous amount of energy stored in that water vapor. And then that coalesces, you know, into a hurricane like Harvey. So it just draws it in and condenses all that energy and it could dump it, you know, in a few days. Um, so what so, are some of, yeah. So what are some of the answers uh, to this challenge and how much of this is human related, uh, is, are humans responsible for? So the one incontrovertible fact is that the, the magnitude of the impacts is skyrocketing. And, you know, part of that increase is related to more people living by the seashore, you know, more people living in the mountains in, in California. But it's incontrovertible that climate change has had a big 
contribution to that as well. And this is just over the last five years, right? It's, it's increasing very quickly. So the, the two things that we can do, at least, you know, is improve uh, our climate adaptation and early warning systems. And that's what we're doing here at the Climate Hazard Center. And then, of course, we can reduce our, our greenhouse gas emissions and, you know, both act personally, locally, and, and then, you know, at the state and national level. Well, I, I'm going to talk more with you. I thank you, by the way, for doing this with me, and thank you for sticking around for Newsmakers Extra as well. I find it very interesting that all of this got going because you were trying to figure out a way to stop famine in Africa. I mean, that's not a small little challenge. So, But how that <laughs> evolved into a book, I find that fascinating. We'll talk more about that.